Barrett Salee, welcome back to T-Town. I hope you all as well, man. I'm doing well, Ryan. I'm sorry I missed you in the press box on Saturday. I don't know. I, usually you and I run into each other like immediately in those places, and I didn't see you this week. Yeah, I don't. I, and well, Drew DeArmond made me late uh, because he was he was late getting to Tuscaloosa, so I got there about an hour and a half. Normally, I'm about I'm the early guy. I like getting there about three hours prior. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was giving a buddy a ride because we uh, we're, we're having to negotiate parking and everything. But uh, uh, so so maybe that's why I I I, I looked uh, for a lot of different people, but uh, I missed you. But I'll see you Saturday. I know you'll be there then. That's true. Well, Drew needs to be more considerate of your time. I future. know it. I know it, and, and he knows it too. But some kind of bottleneck on the interstate caused him to be late, or at least that's where he blamed it at. So I'm, I'm, throw, I'm throwing him under the bus and backing over him right there. So I love it. I love it. All right. I mean, it's, it's time of the year, man. We're calling out people. We, we've been talking, believe it or not, the first hour and 36 minutes, we haven't spent a lot of time with Alabama and Auburn, but let's go back since you were there. Biggest takeaway from that game? That you know, Alabama has, you know, this is assuming they finish off and win the national championship, but – uh, right now, they're the number one team in the country. And so, at this point, they are, I think, on pace to make a case that they're the best college football team of all time. I mean, it, it is startling watching that team, how good they are. I mean, that's a good Auburn defense. And, yeah, they ran out of gas. And Auburn's defense, I'm sure, is just sick and tired of carrying the team. And they couldn't do it in the second half against Alabama. But, I mean, the amount of speed and the, the way to a – you know, is, is able to, to, to use all of his receivers. And, I mean, just everything is just it, – it's unbelievable how how refined that team is. Um, so that was a takeaway. So with that said, um, you know, and not to contradict myself, but if you're an Alabama fan, you kind of got to look at that and say, okay, why was Auburn able to run so effectively? Relatively speaking, that's, you know, obviously the, the, the long touchdown was called back, but – I mean, even though the penalty was definitely a hold, it really didn't matter in terms of the play. Um, you know, so you have to wonder about that a little bit, um, especially because that was the only drive. And you don't ask me why Gus Malzahn didn't go back to it, but it was the only drive that Auburn used tempo. So, um, you know, but again, I mean, it, it's you're nitpicking at this point because that's one small problem that pops up once uh, and only once. So, I mean, it's it's just, it's pretty startling. But what you're saying is, as far as the best college football team, but they've got some deficiencies in this special team sure. area. I mean, I mean, and so you you kind of take that into what you said, and then you talk about where they're deficient in some areas, but certainly the strengths in others. There are, and, and here's the thing: is you, I would I always say that Miami 2001 is the best college football team of all time. And it's I, up there. honestly, I, I think. If, you could say a Nebraska team in the, in the 90s, okay. But to me, it's 2001 Miami. And look at that team. I mean, Ken Dorsey was not a difference maker at quarterback. You know, so their deficiency, I would say, relatively speaking, was at the most important position. Alabama's is on special teams. Um, you know, it hasn't really come up to bite them. It really hasn't even um, been an issue other than an annoyance for the Alabama fans. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, no team's perfect, and Alabama's not perfect, but they're pretty darn close to it. Let, let's kind of handle some things as we do, because I want to get your opinion on a couple of different things. Uh, do you feel, and, and it seems like every Monday I ask you the same question, but because of some of the push that you hear from some of the national guys, Kyler Murray and Tua Tungvaloa, is there still a gap? How big is the gap between on the Heisman Trophy? It's big. Uh, it's really, really big. Uh, I think there's – I wouldn't say too a fatigue because every time he plays, I think people are wowed by him. But there's 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 storyline fatigue, if that makes sense. Like, we all know how good Tua is. So, um, you know, something fresh needs to be injected, especially considering, you know, the majority of, of the playoff part of the season um, has been real chalky. So, I think that's really it. Um, but, I, look, I, I, that, that's – it's not fake. That's the thing is, like, Kyler Murray – is having the second best season in quarterback history above Baker Mayfield from last year. This what happens at the other two. It's the one above him is who's talking about lower right now. So, I mean, I think it's part of it is because there's lack of storyline. And part of it, I think, is to, it's because people want, want to not only potentially vote for him, but make other folks recognize that there's a legitimate case that could be made for him 
to at least be more than an afterthought. And it seems like right now, or the majority of the season, everybody's been an afterthought. And and really, I mean, I get that. That's not fair to, to, to Kyler. Kyler's having an unbelievable season. Let's go to this Georgia-Alabama game. Uh, what do you see in this matchup? Because I feel like all week we've already started the narrative that this is the rematch, but I see both teams as having a lot of different pieces. Yeah, maybe the same brands, Alabama versus Georgia, but both teams look uh, a little different than, than what we saw last January there in the in the Dome. Yeah, they do. I mean, obviously Alabama looks different for reasons we all know. Uh, Georgia, I, I don't think it looks, you know, completely different, but there are – there are distinctions for this team that are, I think, um, much bigger than, uh, than than just uh, age and Jake Fromm's experience. Their wide receiving core is awesome. Like you know, we all talk about how good Alabama's is. Georgia's isn't much worse. I mean, Georgia's is really, really good. They know how to get um, people in the right spots. Fromm knows how to find them. He's been as accurate as anybody, especially this last month of the season. So yeah, I mean, it's it's. It's very similar, and, and I think the fact that they got DeAndre Swift, I actually asked Kirby Smart about this yesterday, the fact that they got DeAndre uh, Swift back healthy has really changed things because now, um, you know, like Alabama, you know, they've got Damian, they've got Holyfield, they've got Harry, and they've got a bunch of different guys that, that can play. So very similar. I think it'll be, I would say, similar game to last year, um, but – uh, you know they can play. They have a chance to beat that beat Alabama. That's not that's not a pushover team. It's not going to be a um, you know a game where Nick Saban can put it in cruise control. It's going to be a full quarter battle. Yeah, go, going back, you you were talking about Georgia's passing attack. Um, I was looking up some of those numbers when you look about passing offense. Alabama's six in college football. Certainly, I mean that's even hard to say that Alabama's six in in total passing uh, <laughs> when you look at it. Uh, Georgia's 73rd. You, you, you think those numbers are misleading a little bit? I think they're very misleading okay. um, because, uh, you know, Georgia has really not had the need to do it, and so they haven't done it as much. But when they do, they're very effective. So, yeah, I, I think that is extremely misleading um, because, you know, again, they, they – um, unlike Tua and Alabama – I think Alabama made a concerted effort, even though Tua didn't play in four quarters, they, I mean, they, they wanted to get a lot out of them because they hadn't really seen a whole lot from them, even though he won a national championship last year. Um, so they gave him a lot really quickly because they knew, you know, hey, this guy doesn't really have a ton of experience. And so with Fromm, I don't, I don't think they did that at all with Georgia. They, they knew what they had. They didn't try to mess it up. They just kind of kept doing their thing um, and really didn't feel the need to run it up. And not to say Nick Saban did run it up, but he wanted to run his offense. I think a little bit like the full offense a little bit more. Um, so that that might explain a little bit. Not say two of stats are inflated because of it, um, because they're they're not that inflated because of it. But you needed to get some work, and I think that's what happened with Alabama. When you look at the dogs of putting pressure on the quarterback, they're one of the uh, worst teams in the SEC. Yeah. And I look at as far as as college football, they're around one hundredth. Uh, when you talk about putting pressure on the quarterback. What do they do to have to change that? Because if they give two all day, this could get ugly. Maybe it's where Vegas is sort of anticipating this 13-and-a-half point difference. Uh, what, what does Georgia need to change to put pressure on, on Tua Tungvalu in this Alabama I offense? Think got, I think they got to get pressure up the middle, um, you know, because Tua has done a great job, especially on the run, getting out of pressure. Um, but, you know, he, and he's fast, but he's not the fastest guy in the world. Um, and he's quick, but he's not the quickest guy in the world. So they've got to, you know, stunt, twist, do things like that up front, um, and just try to try to get some uh, some mismatches on the offensive line for Alabama. Uh, try to confuse that offensive line a little bit, um, you know, with, with some uh, some creative stuff up front. And you know, I think that's easier said than done. Alabama's offensive line is is pretty darn solid, although it hasn't been great all year, but it has been pretty solid all year. So you know, I think that's how they attack it, and. You know, I think yeah. If that's if that's um, the weak point, and it is for Georgia, I think that um, would certainly explain the big spread because Georgia, from a talent perspective, is not a 14 point dog to, to to Alabama. I think from a matchup perspective, that's the one thing where oddsmakers look at and say, okay, um, that could be problematic. 
It's never okay to lose a game. I remember the quote that Nick Saban gave us in Bryant at East Stadium at a press conference a couple of years ago, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. Does Alabama have to win to get in? No, not at all. I mean, I think they're in, not regardless, I think they're in provided they don't get run by like 40, right? Like if they don't get blown out, then they're in. Uh, Because then you'd be talking about, Teams kind of it'd be it'd almost be the exact same conversation as last year, right? Uh, a flawed Ohio State with a bad loss, an Oklahoma team that has a loss uh, and doesn't play defense, just assuming both of those teams win, a UCF team that's undefeated and been against a bad schedule, and Alabama without a conference championship and only one loss and passing every single eye test. It would be the same exact conversation, and so yeah, they would get in as long as they don't just get absolutely annihilated. So g- give me your four, just a prediction, uh, basing everything that you think is going to happen this weekend. Who are the four teams that's going uh, to, to the playoffs? I think Alabama will be one, uh, Clemson two, Notre Dame three, and I think Ohio State beats Northwestern um, badly and, uh, and gets that number four spot. Here's the thing, though. if <laughs> Let's just assume that Ohio State loses and Oklahoma's defense looks wretched in a win. If Georgia plays Alabama really close and loses, would Georgia be considered a better team than Oklahoma? They, 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 they would might. be. They would be, but, Barrett, you know we live in this region. Could you imagine the fatigue that would have? Oh, my heavens. Hey, you know what? I'm here for that. <laughs> I'm 100% here for that. Woo. I love some controversy. Well, and, and speaking of uh, that, I'm read, reading a report uh, or a tweet coming out of AL.com uh, from Josh Moon. I'm sure you saw it a couple of minutes ago. Uh, he's reporting, turns out Gus's job at Auburn isn't nearly safe as one thought. There is some serious movement among the high-powered officials at AU to fire him to the point mm-hmm. that a replacement has been identified and in initial meetings held to gauge interests. That's coming out of AL.com, Josh Moon. Uh, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've heard that exact thing, and that, in fact, it talked about that exact subject with Auburn folks on the beat in the press box on Saturday. Um, yeah, that's real. That's 100% real. I didn't know about the uh, the potential replacement part of it. Um, that's uh, Auburn has had issues by hiring coaches when other ones are already still employed in the past, if you remember correctly. Um, you know, so, yeah, I mean, I – I know those things are happening. I think that um, it's it's a matter of of really Alan Green deciding that he wants to run the athletic department or he wants boosters to do it for him. Um, and I I don't know which side of the fence he's on in that. Um, but I do know that Auburn's pretty dysfunctional, and it's always a power struggle uh, between boosters and AD. And I, I'm very interested to see what would happen. Um, and how that power struggle works out. But, yeah, the, um, the idea that, that there are people putting together, um, you know, a, a package to, uh, to try to fire him, famous boosters, big boosters pushing. Um, yeah, I, I won, I've, I've heard that exact same thing long before that, uh, that report was even out. I just think that uh, finding the right guys, what, what they need to do, and because, again, if you're going to pay that price tag, and we've talked about this before, if you're going to pay that price tag, you better have the guy lined up and, and it better be somebody who knocks, you know, it knocks the ball out of the park as a home run higher. And if they've already got somebody, and I guess the quote is an established, very successful college coach. If, if they have somebody like that lined up, then yeah, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they pulled the trigger, but they have to have that element. But, but do you know how this works though, Barrett, even though someone says they have an interest, they're playing it for a race too. I mean, what God, if it's somebody God. that doesn't have a coaching job, right? Well, now? and maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. So, uh, I'm trying to think. Is oh, there you go. Yeah, maybe. but but I don't know. Like, I, I mean, I saw the report, and that my 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 brain was being racked. Like, you know, yeah. I mean, who who would take that? I mean, here's the thing, too. You know, it's not it's not as easy as just calling up, you know, Mike Gundy or something, because Auburn knows if Auburn's going to get played. I mean, they're not going to do this unless they're not going to get played. So, um, you know, it would have to. Be, and really, I mean. The top five job and the top 50 job right now, the difference in those are minuscule because you can make your money anywhere. You have the resources anywhere. So it would, it would, I think, almost have to be, I mean, unless it's Jimbo Fisher or somebody or Urban Meyer or, or 
Adler Sweeney, unless it's one of those guys, I would imagine it has to be somebody who is unemployed, probably by choice. And really, the only one I can think of that would potentially do it is Bob Stoops. And I, I, I hate to bring this up, but you free? I mean, I, the name just popped up. Mm-hmm. No, it's no, it's too mm-hmm. early, right? I mean, I mean, he, he's got to stop at the OC job before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just I'm, that I'm, that ain't happening. Um, I don't know. Lane Kiffin just for fun. Oh uh, my heavens! Could you do you know how great that would be for oh. your product? Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, Barrett. Lane goes to Auburn. Jalen transfers as a grad transfer to Auburn. Oh my God, that'd be so great! <laughs> that would be the greatest thing for this offseason. Oh, this like, offseason would be rolling, screw, man. Screw the boring, chalky playoffs. Just get to the offseason and let the fun begin. Oh, golly, bum! Hey, Barrett, man, I appreciate you. CBSSports.com, Sirius XM College eighty four. Uh, there on the Sirius Radio. Certainly appreciate the conversation. I'll see you Saturday in Atlanta. Thank you, man. All right, see you, Ryan.